people, were we actually going to Mars or some other planetary domain that the jump room was taking us to? What were these reports about people, you know, our jumpers being killed or wounded and then suddenly appearing at the jump room, one of the jump room facilities asking to be sent home? Wow. Uh, and so he was really sort of the Indiana Jones, as you as you know, of, of E.T. human liaison. How come the, yeah, uh, how come uh, Nixon picked him? Between you guys to be liaison. Yeah, I don't liaison. know, but actually the Nixon secret team connection is through the whole program. These were all Nixon Republicans, including my father. And, and uh, was Nixon part of this, or they had a shadow group that inside the... Actually, uh, astonishingly, Bernard claims, and I don't doubt it, that after leaving the White House in disgrace in August of 1974, President Nixon kept abreast of these really far-out defense technical programs and was monitoring what was going on in the jump room program from, from no. retirement in San Clemente. He was interested. Huh? Yeah, and Bernie also, there, again, we find the Howard Hughes connection in Bernie's interaction with Howard Hughes. The building, certainly during those years, was owned and operated by Hughes. Courtney Hunt of the CIA, who was my second um, of my two Mars training officers, had frequent contact with the Hughes facility out in Canoga Park. Um, my my father and Brett's father were certainly liaising, liaising to other aerospace contractors. What was the, your father's position? My father was a special projects engineer at the Ralph M. Parsons Company of Pasadena. I see. And Brett's father was an operations analyst at Lockheed Skunk Works in Burbank. How did your father got involved with these people? My dad first got involved in the secret projects of the Defense Department, including those related to the extraterrestrial presence. Um, in October of 1952, when he was contacted at his place of employment and told to report to Curtis Wright the next Monday to work on the ramjet engine, which was a high-performance jet engine project that was hoped would enable us to chase the extraterrestrial craft out of our atmosphere in the near space environment. My dad was tasked with the responsibility to design a metal alloy whereby the ramjet would not melt oh. from molecules of air That's or right. particles of space dust when it was operating at, at mm -hmm. supersonic speeds. So much of what he did during his conventional engineering career was in mining and metallurgy Metro and different dams and co copper smelters and things, nuclear power plants. But that was used as an operational cover for working on so more, much more sophisticated technology related to possessing counterforce if we ever came into conflict, conflict with the extraterrestrials or the former Soviet Union. Their, their number one national security fear was that the United States would be overrun by the Soviet army delivered by the Soviet Navy. Wait, wait, back During, up. You, you went too fast. Can you be quiet there, please? We, we are taping. Um, you're going too fast. Can you slow down a little sure. and repeat that whole thing? Again? They were concerned about the fact that the extraterrestrials visiting our planet and the former Soviet Union were two potential adversaries of the United States that would possess superior technology. So, for example, going back to the event that caused my father to be brought into the ramjet project in 1952, the flying saucers that flew over Washington, D.C. in July of 1952, there were nine of them, they were clocked at traveling at 7,000 miles per hour by wow. Langley Air Force Base. Awesome. They were also observed by trained observers on the ground, law enforcement, citizens, as suddenly being in one place in the sky, you know, here's the Capitol building, and then suddenly that one was over here. So they knew that the ETs were in possession of essentially instantaneous travel from time travel, from teleportation. Jump. Uh, they were jumping jump, around yeah. in the sky. In fact, some of the eyewitness citizen accounts talked about them sort of dancing in the sky, but what they were actually doing uh, was moving position, not just, you know, being jostling around what above sort, the Capitol. What kind of ET were they? I don't know, but I know that they weren't from this planet. In fact, I had, I'm always asked about my take on the extraterrestrial question, and I try to avoid it because most of the U.S. time travel capability was the result of human ingenuity, not extraterrestrial, not the reverse engineering right. of extraterrestrial craft. But have you met any ET or ET contact? I met ETs both casually growing up as if they were investigating me. because Human I, type, huh? No, small grays. And I was brought into a meeting with two tall grays. Where did you meet the small gray first time? Oh, God. The small grays were showing up in my childhood. Just in the house, in the backyard, in my bedroom. Showing up, like appearing. 
Yeah, in fact, one time, one 